Hello, my dear viewers. Today I'm going to talk about Titan X. I had it for a couple of days and uh, I've developed kind of a, a love-hate relationship with it. Um, also, for those of you who are wondering when the next giveaway is going to be, it is coming at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. I will announce it in the end of this video. So, first of all, I'm going to do something that I haven't seen a mainstream reviewer do. Um, everyone shows you the front of this card, but nobody shows you the back. And I really want to show you that. This has no backplate, as you may have um, heard on the news. So, not black backplate, but at least there's a silver lining. This PCB is absolutely black, black color. Also, we've got a 8-pin and a 6-pin connector at the top. Uh, this Gigabyte logo is just a little sticker. And of course, at the back, DVI, HDMI 2.0 and three display ports. If you have a look at the front, so this is uh, the only thing that's changed is the color. Uh, the same things are inside, so the heatsink is the same uh, vapor chamber heatsink that was on the previous models like 780 and 980, 970 reference cards. And um, I, uh, that's actually one of the things that I don't like. It seems like Nvidia took an approach, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you know, they're always talking about innovation, but all the innovation is just inside. And by the way, um, I'm doing this review strictly from a gamer's point of view. So any of you are saying about deep learning and all that kind of stuff, I'm talking about gaming specifically on this card. So as you can see on the 980, they've done a nice looking backplate. And I really wanted to see this option included. They were giving excuses like, uh, oh, so if you put it in SLI, then it's gonna restrict, it's gonna restrict the airflow. But, you know, I want to have the option because if I want to unrestrict my airflow, I'm gonna take this thing off. I'm gonna take the back plate off and uh, give it more airflow. But what am I supposed to do if I just have one of these? And I would still want to game on one GPU if I'm a competitive, a competitive gamer, for example. Because have a look, this is a 900 pound card. And this is a GTX 960, uh, 160, I believe closing into 170 pounds. And it has a nice looking backplate. Look at this, a very nice one, metal. Right. So that is one of the things I don't like. Um, I have some bullet points here. What's next up? Right. So fans. How loud is it? And how hot is it? Uh, it actually runs above 80 degrees. So I consider it to be really hot. And I'm actually, because of that, I'm planning on water cooling it. So I'm going to... Um, do my April build and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to complete it in April this is the case that I will be using and I really want to water cool this and do some extreme overclocking and that actually brings us to the subject of overclocking there is no dual bias here so you know beware of that but it actually uh, as all the other Maxwell family cards this is a very easy car to overclock. That is something, you know, that I love about Nvidia's new Maxwells. They're just candy. So easy to overclock. Uh, without even tweaking the voltage, I've managed to up a memory by 500 megahertz and the core by 220 without touching the voltage. I um, actually released, already published a video about the results, so you can go ahead and check that out if you are interested in what the difference is, because I've got like side-by-side -side comparison 
in, um, in real game benchmarks. So yeah, that is a plus for NVIDIA. And uh, another thing, uh, because it runs hot, the fans get pretty loud, especially if you want to uh, bring the temperature down from like 83, 84 degrees down, you know, under 80 degrees uh, limit, then you want to tweak the fan speed through the software and it's going to get pretty loud. What up, what's up next is I really want to talk about how, you know, the power consumption is just amazing. Don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not hating on this card because it, if, if you put the price aside, this is one incredible piece of equipment. This is amazing. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Because this has a TDP of 250 watts, yeah? This is an R9-290, AMD's R9-290, which has around the same TDP, but the difference in performance is just, you know, it's just unreach unreachable. It's unbelievable what NVIDIA has achieved. And I'm really excited about seeing what their Pascal uh, architect architecture will bring to the table of um, gaming and uh, general visual experiences. Uh, what else am I going to talk about? So let me see. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to say. Um, another thing is 4K gaming. Uh, I consider this to be the, actually the first card, if you put it in SLI, I consider it to be the first card that is actually good for 4K gaming um, and because you won't have to lower the settings to medium or from ultra to high which is just silly uh, I, from my point of view it is silly to game on a high resolution monitor but with lower textures and this card especially in SLI two-way or three-way I believe it's going to be amazing. I really want to... And another thing I want to see is... I don't have that possibility, but I really want to see someone do a test with like three uh, monitors, 1440p and a GTX Titan setup. So that pretty much wraps up um, the information about the card. If you want to see the specs, I'm not going to throw any specs at you. If you want to see the specs, I've left them in the description below this video. I will post them there. Um, also, any relevant links. And the uh, next thing I want to do is show you the performance. So, let's jump into some games and have a look how well it does. I'm going to start by showing you performance in Far Cry 4, which I consider to be one of the best looking games so far and um, everything is running at stock so this is stock settings of this card uh, as for the video settings i only have a 1080p monitor right now but it's a 144 hertz one so we're gonna see some uh, high fps there if there if there is gonna be any all the textures are maxed out uh, 4x TXAA is enabled and all the NVIDIA GameWorks options are enabled where, where, they are, where they're available. And motion blur is off because I hate, absolutely despise this option. Yuck. So, straight away, you can see that uh, the core boosts by itself to 1200 MHz and the temperatures are... Uh, actually, right now are 78, but I've seen 83 before. As you can see, it copes pretty well. Above 50 FPS. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do just a quick run in this game, and I'm gonna show you another game after this. So.
difference. And last but not least is Shadow of Mordor. Uh, this is my favorite game of the year and let me walk you through the uh, settings that I've chosen. I actually put up the resolution a little bit because this game only supports FXAA uh, which doesn't look very nice so yeah and it also gives you the um, kind of uh, inside look uh, on how this game would perform on 1440p monitors as you can see I've got ultra textures downloaded so this is the absolute maximum that you can squeeze out even depth of field is turned on this is actually something that you can choose to turn off to get some extra performance and uh, as well I don't know if I should turn off X FXA I'll keep it for now so yeah I am suggesting that you play this game at above 60 frames per second um, because it changes the experience drastically so let's have a look uh, at how it performs. I actually have a massive battle going on uh, as soon as I click escape so it will be like most intensive uh, GPU loading right here so there we go as you can see there's so many so many orcs around and look at this game this is just awesome and it looks beautiful and look at the frame rate. 60 plus. Great. So yeah, that wraps up the performance overview. And um, I will be doing more tests. I'll be showing you more tests. So make sure to subscribe to, to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. To see me test it against 980 SLI. 970 SLI and the single cards as well in many many other games uh, many of the latest games and um, next thing is uh, the giveaway so stay tuned for that now the giveaway this is the gaming mouse that I reviewed earlier you can check it out by clicking the annotation link over here so this is actually my first sponsored giveaway and um, I want to say big thanks to Utech Smart for making this possible and I will leave all the links, all the necessary links in the description below. So if you want to see more awesome giveaways like this one and the bigger ones and the smaller ones, then please go ahead and click that link to the Utech Smart uh, page and like the, like the page please and um, yeah because they have some good products you might want to even check it out and as for this giveaway I'm going to do it through my Facebook page uh, so the way I'll do it is I will post this video on my Facebook page and to in order to enter the giveaway which will close next week on Friday 10th of April I will choose a winner and send him this or her this mouse um, what I want you to do is I want you to share this video through Facebook and also leave a comment below saying plus one and that will be your entry into into the draw for this giveaway once again I want to thank you all for watching Stay tuned for more awesome content because I have quite a few reviews lined up of um, some PC cases and PC hardware as well as a build for April um, with a DDR4 based build with 5th generation Intel processor. And as always, thanks for watching.